As I patrolled the dense expanse of Greystone National Forest, the familiar crunch of leaves under my boots was a comforting rhythm in the quiet woods. My name's Sam, and for the past 10 years, I've worn the badge of a forest ranger with a mix of pride and respect. The forest, with its unending whispers and rustling leaves, had always been more of a home than just a workplace. This morning, like any other, began with a routine check of the trails. The air was crisp, the kind that fills your lungs with the earthy scent of pine and damp soil. Birds sang overhead, a natural symphony that I'd come to appreciate. But today, something felt off. It was like the forest had a different tune, one that I couldn't quite put my finger on. As I made my way through the familiar trails, I noticed something unusual. Footprints, not of hikers, were embedded in the mud. They were oddly shaped, almost human, but distorted, with elongated toes and uneven spacing. A chill ran down my spine, but I brushed it off as an anomaly. Maybe a prank by some kids, I thought. Continuing my patrol, I reached a clearing where I usually take my break. That's when I saw them. Dead animals, arranged in a circle, their bodies untouched by decay. It wasn't the sight of death that unsettled me. After all, nature is raw and unforgiving. It was the deliberate arrangement, a pattern that felt intentional and disturbing. I scanned the area, searching for any sign of who or what could have done this. That's when I noticed the trees. Carved into their bark were symbols I couldn't recognize. They weren't the usual markings of campers or hikers. These were different, ancient looking, and gave off an ominous vibe. I reported back to the station, my mind racing with questions. Maybe some cult was using the forest for their rituals? It wouldn't be the first time. But deep down, I knew these weren't just human activities. There was a heaviness in the air, a sense that I was being watched. That evening, as I made my way back, the forest's ambiance had shifted. The once friendly chatters and chirps now seemed like hushed whispers, as if the trees themselves were speaking in hushed tones. Every snap of a twig underfoot made me jolt. The feeling of being followed grew stronger with each step. I quickened my pace, eager to leave the forest's embrace. As dusk painted the sky in shades of orange and purple, I saw it. A shadowy figure standing just at the edge of my vision. Humanoid, but wrong, somehow. It stood unnaturally tall, its outline blurred as if struggling to exist. It vanished into the shadows as if it was never there at all. I stood there, heart racing, trying to make sense of what I'd just seen. Was it my imagination, fueled by the day's strange events? Or was there something more? Something lurking in the depths of Greystone? That night, back at my cabin, the forest's darkness felt oppressive, like a weight pressing against the windows. I couldn't shake the feeling that something out there was watching me waiting. As I lay in bed, listening to the wind howling through the trees, I realized the forest I loved so much had just shown me its other face, a face I never knew existed. Sleep didn't come easy that night. The image of the shadowy figure haunted my thoughts, its presence a stark reminder that in the wilderness, we're never truly alone. Something was out there in Greystone, something ancient and unseen and it had just made its presence known to me. The night had been restless, filled with fleeting shadows and the echoes of unexplained noises just outside my cabin. As dawn broke, casting a pale light through the dense canopy of Greystone National Forest, I knew something had shifted. The forest wasn't just a wilderness anymore. It had become a puzzle, hiding secrets in its shadows. With a sense of unease, I started my day's patrol. The forest seemed to watch me, an unseen presence lurking in the stillness. The air was thick with anticipation, as if the woods were waiting for something to happen. Walking the trails, I noticed subtle changes. Paths seemed to alter slightly, leading me to unfamiliar areas I didn't recall from my years of patrolling. Trees that I had passed countless times now bore strange scars, not made by any animal known to the region. It was as if the forest itself was shifting rearranging. At the heart of the forest, I came across a clearing that I was sure hadn't been there before. 
the grass was unnaturally vibrant, forming a stark contrast against the dark woods. In the center lay a circle of stones, meticulously arranged, their origins a mystery. As the day wore on, the silence of the forest grew oppressive. The usual sounds of wildlife were eerily absent, replaced by a quiet so profound it felt like a weight upon my ears. Even the wind seemed to whisper secrets in a language I couldn't understand, sending shivers down my spine. In the late afternoon, as shadows grew longer, I stumbled upon a small, abandoned cabin, its existence a mystery in itself. The door was ajar, swinging gently in the breeze, the interior dark and unwelcoming. Inside I found remnants of occupancy long gone, a tattered diary, its pages filled with ramblings about being watched and a sense of dread that seemed to leap off the pages. As I left the cabin, a sudden movement in the periphery of my vision caught my attention. I turned swiftly, only to see a blur disappearing between the trees. A chill ran down my spine. Was I being followed? Or was my imagination, fueled by the day's discoveries, playing tricks on me? Returning to my station, the forest felt alive, watching my every move. At every turn I expected to see something emerge from behind the trees, but there was only silence and the feeling of being observed from afar. That night, as I sat in my cabin poring over old maps and reports, trying to piece together the mysteries of the day, I realized I couldn't ignore these anomalies. Something was happening in Greystone. Something unexplainable. I had to delve deeper to uncover the truth behind these whispers in the woods. As I prepared to venture out the next day, the forest seemed to call to me, an invitation laced with both danger and intrigue. The night was restless again, filled with sounds that were almost like hushed voices, as if the trees themselves were speaking. Each creak of my cabin seemed to echo with a hidden meaning, a warning or perhaps a beckoning. I lay awake, thoughts racing. The diary's words haunted me, its fear now mirrored in my own heart. The forest, once a place of solace, now felt like a labyrinth hiding a presence that watched, waited, and moved in the shadows. As the first light of dawn crept through the curtains, I made a decision. Today, I wouldn't follow the trails. Today, I would venture into the uncharted areas of Greystone, where the maps showed nothing but dense forest. I had to find the source of this unease, to confront whatever was altering the forest and perhaps watching me from the darkness. With a mix of apprehension and determination, I prepared for a journey deeper into the woods than I had ever gone. Little did I know, what awaited me in the heart of Greystone was beyond anything I could have imagined. The secrets of the forest were ancient, and they were stirring, roused by an unknown force that I was yet to encounter. I stepped out into the morning mist, the forest greeting me with its eerie silence. Today, I would find answers, or so I hoped. But as I ventured deeper, unaware of what lay ahead, the forest seemed to close in around me. The morning mist hung heavy in the air as I ventured deeper into Greystone National Forest than I ever have before. My heart pounded in my chest, not just from the exertion, but from a growing sense of dread. Each step took me further from the familiar paths and deeper into uncharted territory. The deeper I went, the more the forest changed. The trees grew denser, their branches intertwining above me like a web, blocking out the weak sunlight. The air was colder here, and every breath I took felt like inhaling a hidden, chilling truth. As I pushed forward, the silence of the forest was oppressive. No birdsong, no rustling of small animals in the underbrush. It was as if the forest itself was holding its breath, watching me with unseen eyes. The only sound was the crunch of leaves and twigs under my boots, a constant reminder that I was an intruder in this ancient place. I came to a clearing that shouldn't exist, a perfect circle surrounded by ancient trees that seemed to guard it. In the center stood a figure, the Watcher. It was motionless, a silhouette barely discernible against the dark backdrop of the forest. Its presence was overwhelming, a palpable force that seemed to weigh on my very soul. I stood frozen, my eyes locked on the figure. It was tall and unnaturally thin, its form obscured by the shadows. I couldn't make out any features, but I felt its gaze upon me, cold and unyielding, 
A primal fear took hold of me. A fear of something ancient and powerful, something that was a part of the forest itself. The Watcher moved, a slow, deliberate motion that was almost imperceptible. It was a subtle shift in the shadows, but enough to send a wave of terror through me. I realized then that I was not the hunter in these woods. I was the prey. I wanted to run, to flee back to the safety of my cabin, but my legs wouldn't move. I was rooted to the spot, held by the watcher's gaze. The air grew colder, and I could see my breath forming misty clouds in front of me. Then the watcher spoke. It wasn't a sound, but a whisper in my mind, a voice that seemed to come from the forest itself. The words were indecipherable, a language I couldn't understand, but the message was clear. I was not welcome here. The fear was overwhelming, suffocating. I knew I had to leave, to escape this place before it was too late. With every ounce of willpower, I forced myself to take a step back, then another. The Watcher remained motionless, but I felt its gaze follow me, piercing through the shadows. As I stumbled backward, the forest seemed to come alive around me. The trees groaned, and the ground beneath my feet felt unsteady. I turned and ran, not daring to look back, but I could feel the Watcher's presence behind me, a silent sentinel pursuing me with its unseen eyes. The forest was no longer a place of refuge. It had become a twisted maze, a trap with me at its center. Branches reached out like gnarled hands, trying to grasp at me as I ran. The once familiar trails were gone, replaced by a labyrinth of darkness and fear. I could hear my heart pounding in my ears, drowning out the sounds of my frantic escape. In the chaos of my flight, I lost my bearings. The forest seemed to shift around me, disorienting and confusing. Panic set in as I realized I was running deeper into the unknown. Every direction looked the same, a never-ending expanse of twisted trees and suffocating darkness. Then, in a clearing bathed in the faint moonlight, I saw it again. The Watcher. It stood there, as if it had been waiting for me. This time, there was something different about it. Its form was more defined, more menacing. It was as if the forest had given it substance, molding it from the shadows and the fear that permeated the air. I stopped, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The Watcher tilted its head, as if considering me, and then it began to move towards me. Each step was deliberate, sending waves of terror through my body. I wanted to scream, to call for help, but I knew it would be futile. There was no one in these woods but me and the Watcher. As it drew closer, the air grew colder, and the darkness seemed to deepen. I could see it more clearly now. A form not quite human, with elongated limbs and a gaunt, featureless face. Its eyes, if it had any, were hidden in the shadows, but I could feel them boring into me. I took a step back, then another, my mind racing for a way to escape. But there was no escape. The Watcher was between me and the way back to my cabin, and the forest around me was a prison of shadows. In that moment, a chilling realization hit me. I was not just lost in the forest, I was lost in something much older, much darker. Greystone National Forest had become a realm of fear, and I was at its mercy. The last thing I remember before the darkness engulfed me was the sound of my own heartbeat, thunderous in the silence, and the cold, unrelenting gaze of the Watcher. As the shadows closed in, swallowing me whole, a single thought echoed in my mind. The forest was alive, and it had claimed me as its own. The darkness was absolute, a suffocating blanket that snuffed out all hope of light. I could feel the Watcher's presence enveloping me, a force as ancient as the forest itself. In those final moments, as fear and darkness converged, I understood the true nature of Greystone, a place where reality warped, where nightmares took root and thrived. And then, there was nothing but the echoing whisper of the Watcher in the woods, a sound that seemed to linger even as consciousness slipped away from me. The forest had taken me, and in its heart I found not answers, but a deeper, more profound mystery, one that was now a part of me.